Good morning. Maybe afternoon or evening, depending on what time you're watching. I'm having my cup of coffee this morning. We're going to do a little paint session for you. Again, another special pattern. One that I didn't really want to turn loose of, but I don't have any secrets. This is a stained water pattern that stands next to nothing. I mean, this, this pattern is all about the stained water. Uh, I... Uh, Painted this pattern up many years ago. I uh, really like it in stained water with, with pole timber or, or any kind of timber in it. It's a unique pattern. So uh, if I've got you interested, come on, let's go spray some paint. All right, I've got a bunch of wiggle warts again. Uh, I got these coming going out to a good friend of mine here in, in Oklahoma. And uh, he asked for a... a secret stained water pattern so i don't know man may the secret may get out depending on how many of these okies uh are watching this uh channel today so anyhow uh what we got going on is a unique shed pattern um and we're gonna get her started right now so first thing we're gonna do is lay down a little bit of pearl this this lure is all about having We got a mag ward here. It's all about having a little bit of flash, okay? In fact, it's got a, it's really got a whole lot of flash, and I'm gonna do quite a few because I need to get my stock built back up as well. The guy that's using this tournament fisherman, and there's a lot of really good tournament fishermen here in Oklahoma fish some of these stained waters, so. He wants something that nobody else has got. And getting ready for early spring, late winter here. We, we are in February, almost March. And just the right amount. So I went ahead and done six of those. We're gonna heat set. The next thing we're going to do, and I'll, I won't do all six of these on film this time, is we got to add some red to that throat. We're done with the belly. Get a lot of questions about my holders. Uh, I've noticed I watch a lot of a lot of guys uh, and gals uh, painting videos online, and uh, I noticed a few people started using these. I love them just because, man, you can you can spin a bait, you can availability. You just got to drill some holes in in a board or whatever to to have a good uh, deal to hold it with. But, all right, we need to turn our pressure way down. And we'll see how it shoots at 20. That's going to be plenty. Um, we've got us a green in here, and uh, I've got it really thinned out because I'm going to use this green as an underlying color on the top, uh, basically half of this bait. And I want to go real light right through here. I don't want to. You're not going to see much of this color once we finish the bait. Just the, just the lower half of it. But you're going to see a lot of it in the splatter, so I've got it really thinned down. Okay, so. Okay. So we've got our <clears throat> we've got our underlying color. We're just like I said, we're going to leave just a little bit of that left. Um, here comes the unique part. Okay, and I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and show you colors on this. I don't know. Autoware, you know, Createx has changed their lineup, but you need a gloss black to make this work. 
Okay, whether it's auto wear or whatever, it needs to be a glossy black. All right, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna come up just over the top of that green, and my GoPro keeps shutting down on me. Just make sure you don't cover up all the green. Need that good and dry. A little quick heat set on it. All right, quick silver chrome. We're going to scale it. I'm going to use one of my nets, hoops. If you haven't seen that, um, video on how I make these hoops, if that'll help you with your scale patterns. These things last forever and it kind of lets you do some things one-handed. Uh, but you've got to go extremely light. Now, I'm going to stand this up. Now, there's you don't have to use the hoop. You can see if you can see this. We're going to press that over the bait and keep it good and tight and you've got to go light I am not running much air this stuff is really thin. And it doesn't give you a mirror chrome, but it does. I don't know if you can see that. Obviously, with the scales, it's a little different, but anytime you put clear coat over something, though, it, it, it washes it out, okay? But that provides some flash, along with the pearls in those stained water conditions, okay? All right, I'm going to hit these other, other five baits or four baits. And, uh, well, actually, I can go ahead. Let me get the, uh, I should have done the green before that, to be honest with you. We can go ahead and do the green. All right, we're going to reduce our pressure, and we're going to do some pretty good-sized droplets. So we got to turn our pressure down. Let's look at, yeah. Now, I'm not trying to get that up on the on the uh, chrome, but it doesn't matter if you do, okay? Just trying to get that down on the bait, let it flow down. That's why I'm shooting somewhat at an angle. So now we'll take a quick break. I'm going to get these other ones done and we'll jump right back in. Next step we've got here, and this one will be real subtle. Uh, 
We're going to be using a mica powder and a transparent base uh, for a little bit of red that uh, will just give it that chrome a little bit of a sheen. Uh, probably will not pick up on camera. But we're just going to lightly hit that chrome with that mica powder. <clears throat> Next thing, let's see, did I get that one? Yep. I don't know if you can pick that up. You want to go really light. Um, if you're using a, a two-part epoxy or even with my clear, a, a great thing for this pattern is some red glitter. Um, <clears throat> really makes it pop. It's got to be really, like really ultra small red glitter. But last thing we have is our black splatter. We want some pretty large droplets. To go down over the sides and the top of this bait. You can also flick it if you want some bigger droplets. Just showing you guys a little bit. Some other techniques to get this splatter effect. Just kind of depends on what you want. Just a little black paint in a brush. I usually use the stippling effect. All right, we're going to hit these other few real quick. what happens last one of the day getting low on paint we can fix it but we're gonna have to make both of them a little bit bigger and a little bit of moisture big shad kill Make this one bigger too. <laughs> Looks good. All right, so last thing that we have to do is we're going to paint some red eyes. You guys have seen that a many times, so I'm going to just do one on camera. And uh, we will cut to the final products. So we're going to use the big hole. I'm getting shaky in my old age.
Really need to come back. I'd like to have a little bit bigger droplets of on the black splatter on the top. Uh, kind of like we did on, on some of this one. So we'll dial that back, but I won't bore you with it. You'll see some pictures of it in the final product. Again, want to thank you guys for watching and uh, spending the time to check out my videos. Um, again, the purpose of this one is, is, is to show you some different techniques involved. We've got scaling. We've got splatter technique. We've got some unique colors uh, into this particular bait. It's a great uh, square bill crankbait uh, color, I believe. Uh, I really like it around standing timber. If you like this video, uh, please remember to give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of the uh, up coming videos that I put out. Until next week, Green Country Baits signing out.